Hello everyone. So today we're going to be talking about a character who is master of the negative zone, is wielder of the cosmic control rod, and has beaten Galactus. We're of course talking about Annihilus. Now of course the publisher is Marvel Comics, and Annihilus' first appearance is the Fantastic Four Annual number 6 of November 1968. And this character was created by Stan Lee and the legendary Jack Kirby. Now, long ago in the negative zone of the Marvel Universe, when the, excuse me for saying this wrong, Tyanians, which is sort of a cat-like race, they seeded life spores on barren planets, and one of their ships crashed lands in a volcanic planet named Arthros. Before the crew died, they released the spores. Now, many years later, only one of the spores evolved into an insectoid creature and by happenstance, due to a mutation, had a very high intelligence for a bug-like creature in the Marvel Universe. Finding the wreckage of the Tyanian starship, he used a special helmet to transfer all the information about the advanced technology to himself. This caused him to grow stronger and smarter, gaining a cosmic control rod and body armaments. The creature eventually became known as Annihilus, and he set out to destroy anything that could be a threat to his own existence. Annihilus fears only one thing, death. Because his cosmic control rod extends his lifespan, he defends it from every potential threat, real or imagined. He is basically Gollum from Lord of the Rings, in that he has a psychotic attachment to it and he would lose a vast amount of power from its loss. Now Annihilus first encountered the Fantastic Four when they entered the negative zone seeking antiparticles needed to treat Sue's cosmic ray related pregnancy complications. Annihilus' minions capture the Fantastic Four, but they steal his control rod and escape. They actually return it after siphoning off the needed antiparticles and return back to Earth. Now shortly after this, Annihilus was challenged by a scientist, Janus the Negaman, who developed a module capable of harnessing antimatter within the negative zone. Now Annihilus defeats Janus, forcing the Negaman to lead him to Earth, but Janus was instead seemingly killed in the exploding atmosphere where matter meets antimatter which is the contact point between the two universes colliding. Annihilus was nearly able to cross over to Earth through one of Mr. Fantastic's portals, but was driven back by the Avengers. Now sensing great power within Franklin Richards, Annihilus kidnaps him, along with the Fantastic Four, Medusa, Wyatt Wingfoot, and Agatha Harkness, and brings them into the negative zone. He then used the machine to prematurely release Franklin's full potential, hoping to transfer the energies into himself. However, the four defeat Annihilus and escape back to Earth. Now Blastar, which is another negative zone warlord, gained sole control of the rod and left Annihilus to die. Now Annihilus tries to escape to Earth, but he was defeated by the Avengers and Fantastic Four before returning to the negative zone. Annihilus was then revived by Blastar and regained his control rod. Now the realm of Asgard had broken loose from its accustomed place in the heavens and intersected into the negative zone. Now when Annihilus learned of this new territory, he decided to conquer it. He bested the Asgardian soldiers and even Thor before losing to Odin. Annihilus later kidnaps a sleeping Odin and transports him into the negative zone in an effort to steal his power. Annihilus was then later defeated by Thunderstrike. Now Annihilus began leading the Annihilation Wave, which was an enormous fleet of negative zone battleships, claiming to have the goal of conquering the entire universe. He claims that the universe is expanding into the negative zone, and this makes it rightfully his territory. His forces destroy the Kiln, which is an intergalactic power station and maximum security prison, and he also takes out the planet Xandar. He then forms an alliance with Thanos, 
and had secretly aligned with the other two beings, Tenebris and Aegeus, who had been trapped in the kiln by Galactus. Tenebris and Aegeus helped defeat Galactus and the Silver Surfer, and the two are connected to a giant mechanism in Annihilus's starship. Annihilus's goal is to create a massive cosmic bomb that will destroy the whole universe and the negative zone, leaving Annihilus as the sole survivor. Now Drax and the Silver Surfer actually manage to free Galactus, who then swiftly destroys the Annihilation Wave. Nova then battles and violently inside out Annihilus. However, Annihilus was later born as an infant, although still retaining all of the original's memories. Now during the War of Kings, the Negative Zone is invaded by Darkhawk and his ally Talon. They discover that the infant Annihilus and his cosmic control rod have been placed under the care of a lesser lord of the Negative Zone, Catastrophus. Now, Catastrophus had been using the Cosmic Control Rod to stunt the development of the infant Annihilus, hoping to prolong his own rule. Now, Talon slew Catastrophus and seized the Control Rod before calling out to the infant Annihilus and asking it to remember in the future that he had spared his life. Now, during a later incursion into the Negative Zone, Johnny Storm discovers that Annihilus' forces have been rebuilt to a, quote, pre-crunch assault levels, but are currently still involved in a fight with Blastar's forces at the moment. Central to that struggle is a city built from the remains of the Negative Zone, Prison Alpha. The war is then further complicated by the involvement of the Universal in humans. Now, the cult of the Negative Zone made their way into the Baxter Building and breached the portal to the Negative Zone. Once inside, the cult managed to unleash an endless army of Annihilus' insectoid soldiers upon Johnny, the currently powerless Ben, and the Kids of the Future Foundation. Now Johnny uses his Nova Flame in one final sacrifice, but still couldn't burn down the whole army and was captured. Annihilus demanded that Johnny open the portal to Earth, but he refused and was killed. Later, when Reed Richards opens a window to the Negative Zone and threatens Annihilus with the ultimate nullifier, Annihilus, in return, shows Johnny's shredded uniform to Reed. Now, three times Johnny was resurrected by worm healers, but every time he burned them before they had time to recover his body, and he died again and again. Finally, the worms were able to recover his body, and Johnny was sent to prison, where he met the group Light Brigade. Now Johnny Storm learns of the plan and enlists the Inhumans forces as the bugs prepare to cross over. With the aid of the Light Brigade member Cal Blackbane, Johnny wrestles the cosmic control rod away from Annihilus. He then takes control of the Annihilation Wave Armada, using it to battle the Kree fleet as well as the Mad Celestials. Annihilus is then captured and a leash is placed around his neck. At this point, it sounds reasonable. Somehow, after a rebellion breaks out for free elections in the Negative Zone, Annihilus wins as a write-in candidate for new leader of the Negative Zone. And during the Infinity storyline, Annihilus appears as a member of the Galactic Council. It is later revealed that Annihilus was still trapped in child form, and had only been using a mechanized stand-in for his public appearances. Seeking to return to normal or better size, he has his agents abduct Bruce Banner. After his scientist studies Banner's physiology and learn what allows him to transform into the Hulk, Annihilus is mutated into a gigantic, more monstrous form. With this new form, Annihilus and his army make yet another attempt to conquer the universe. He was almost successful this time, ravaging many worlds and killing most of Earth's heroes. However, with the help from the One Above All, Thanos and Adam Warlock are able to travel back in time and prevent Annihilus' invasion from ever occurring. Warlock then uses his powers to devolve Annihilus into a primitive insect, which is then stepped on by Thanos. Annihilus, currently, is now back to a more standard form. 
kidnapping and enslaving shipwreck survivors on a desolate world. Using the Negamans to open a portal out of the negative zone, Annihilus plots to destroy Earth and the rest of the universe by using a powerful energy cannon. However, he is thwarted by the all new, all different Avengers who are able to steal the Negabands and destroy the weapon. Now as far as powers and abilities go with Annihilus, Annihilus is capable of self-propelled flight for up to 150 miles per hour and can withstand the vacuum of space. He has an insectoid exoskeleton with some armored components that grants him resistance to most forms of injury. Now without the cosmic control rod, he still has enhanced strength, easily lifting 50 tons. He also has augmented speed, stamina, durability, agility, and an insane reaction time. He has also evolved to have a newer power, which is to be able to broadcast fears into others. Now, Annihilus usually wields the cosmic control rod, which allows him to manipulate cosmic energy and control the molecular structure of matter. The rod is capable of projecting vast amounts of destructive energy and concussive force. Exposure to the cosmic energies of the rod has also slowed down the aging process of its wielder, making Annihilus virtually immortal. Though not always engaging himself in direct combat, Annihilus has proved to be a very formidable opponent and was able to defeat the Thing, Thor, Nova Prime, Quasar, and Blastar in individual fights with relative ease. When Annihilus killed Quasar and gained his quantum bands, by using these in combination with his own powers, Annihilus was able to withstand a massive blast from Galactus. While the blast destroyed his entire army, along with several solar systems, Annihilus was able to survive. Even as an adolescent, he was able to withstand the Human Torch's hottest flame with little effort, claiming that not even all of the suns in the sky would be enough to burn him. It could be argued that his might even rivals Thanos, with the Titan stating that he was evolving into a being apart from the cosmic norm like that of both Thanos and Adam Warlock themselves. He also leads a elite personal guard, the Centurions, which are 200 superpowered aliens, and each of them are from a different negative zone world. They are extremely loyal to him and form a devastatingly effective army. Now in the Fantastic Four number 600, it is revealed that Annihilus is always reborn upon death as he was at the conclusion of the Annihilation miniseries. This was described by Annihilus as Endless Resurrection. Now Annihilus is one of those characters that is kind of unsung for the Marvel Universe. He is completely powerful, powerful enough to contend with the likes of Thanos and Adam Warlock, etc. And yet, we don't really get to see much of him at all in the cinematic universe, at all meaning none. Maybe he would be the next best thing after Kang has been wiped from the board. We think he is actually what a villain should be, scary, demanding, and dealing in absolutes. Anyway, you guys have a wonderful night. A good morning, a good evening, whichever. Please like, share, and subscribe. We really do appreciate that around here. Also, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think of this video, as well as maybe write a character down that you would like us to make a video on, and we'll see if we can't make it happen. As always, Excelsior.